Good evening. Welcome to St. Wenceslaus Church, where Jesus is encountered, proclaimed, and shared. We extend a special welcome to all visitors in this seventh Sunday of Easter, and we wish a happy Mother's Day to all mothers who are with us. I am Lorene Fiala, Ella Getz, and I are your lecturers for this liturgy. As a small token of appreciation for all the mothers and mother figures in our parish, we invite you to take home a paper ornament that can be planted to grow wildflowers. Ornaments are available as you exit the church after Mass. The Catholic Daughters will be hosting their annual flag sale next weekend. For a goodwill donation, you can use this opportunity to obtain flags for the Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for your generosity. The proceeds will be used for scholarship opportunities for an eighth grade student to attend Catholic High School. The Strawberry Brunch fundraiser has been honored with the gift of a beautiful print of the Holy Mother and Child created by St. Wenceslaus' own Frank Dolphins. This print will be raffled off with proceeds benefiting the Society of St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry. Raffle tickets will be sold after Mass the following two weekends, as well as on June 1st at the Strawberry Brunch. The scripture readings are found in the worship hymnal number 1096. Sharing in the joy of the resurrection, let us stand and greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Our priest celebrant is Father Mike. I, our deacon is Mike Masek. Good evening. Let us gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God the Father who has raised Jesus Christ from the dead be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this water, blessed by the Lord at Easter, will be used to remind us of our baptism. Let us ask God to bless us and to keep us faithful to that spirit that he has given us. In the five thirty.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sin, and through the Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in his heavenly kingdom. We will sing Gloria 297. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience as he promised until the end of the world his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in, in the midst of his brothers. There was a group of about 120 persons in one place. He said, my brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may another take his office. 
Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Judas called Barsaba, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, you, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as a Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. The word of the Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them were lost, except the son of destruction, in order that the, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they did not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that, that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in truth. Your word is truth. As you send me into the world, so I send them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they may also be consecrated in the truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow afternoon, I will gather with most of my family and my mom down at our family cabin in Cedar Creek to celebrate Mother's Day. And in preparation for that, was asking my mom what she wanted for Mother's Day. And she said, I really don't want anything. Just asked if we wanted to bring down some plants to plant down there in the garden that's down there, or a potted plant or the patio, that would be fine, but she really doesn't want anything. And this is kind of the third iteration over her lifetime of what she wanted for Mother's Day. Because when we were very young and we would ask what you want for Mother's Day, she would say, I just want five good kids. <laughs> wanting us to get along with one another, wanting us to be one with one another. As Jesus prays in the Gospel today, may they be one as you and I, Father, are one, praying for that unity of the disciples. And I'm sure my mom offered many, many prayers for the unity of I, myself and my brothers and sisters. Having not received that over many years, she started asking for stuff, particular things, which was the second iteration of asking for gifts. But that desire, that desire of oneness, is what the Lord desires of us because truly, and what we'll celebrate in a couple weeks with the Holy Trinity is that unity, and that unity that is bound by love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Lord desires that and wants that for us. Just as I'm sure every mother, every parent wants that for their family. And praise for that. Praise for that unity. That oneness. And that doesn't always mean that we agree on everything. Because we're not. As human beings, we don't agree completely on everything. But after I get done preaching, we're going to make a profession of faith, and we're called as people of faith to put and to submit our will and our intellect to those things, those dogmas, those doctrines of the church, and to be unified in that. In those pieces of doctrine and dogma, we are to be united, of one heart and one mind. When it comes to other things, there are many ways that we look at things. And when we don't agree, when we see things from different perspectives, to have that respect for one another. In all things, though, to have that charity, to have that true Christian love, for one another so as to build up that unity. We gather together not tonight, not because we all agree on everything and 
and everything is perfect. It's because we need to come together. And it is this meal of unity that draws us even closer together as we sit with the Lord at his table. And it is in gathering that we start to recognize and be pulled to that unity. I'll tell you, one of the things that used to unify my brothers and sisters and I more than anything else, it usually happened over those summer months when we would be home every day and sometimes tensions would rise and we'd be arguing with each other and we wouldn't be listening, we wouldn't be getting done what we needed to get done and my mom was just very frustrated with us at that point and she would lock herself in the bedroom and she would read a book and we could pound on that door, we could knock on that door, we put notes underneath that door trying to get her out. The goal was to get her out before my dad came home because then we'd really get in trouble if we had forced her into the bedroom and he got home. But usually I can remember gathering in either us boys' room or the girls' room and we would make that commitment, we're going to be good. We used to form what was called the Be Nice to Mom Club. That would unite us. Because we recognized that, that our disobedience, our being selfish, fighting with one another, had caused this. And working towards that unity. In a sense, we gather like that this evening. We recognize what our sin, our selfishness, our times when we work for disunity has caused. Cause this. And there's not one of us who can say, I'm not to blame for that. Nor can any of us look at another person and say, well, you're more responsible, responsible than I am for that. For all of us are equally responsible. And when we recognize that, what the Lord does, it's not to condemn us, it's not to hurt us, it's, but to draw us to himself. To experience his forgiveness. And being invited to this altar to draw us together as one. That's his desire for us. And sharing this meal, drawing us together. But the memory of this meal and what it is we celebrate reminds us of why we need to work for that unity. Because in many ways at times we have worked for that disunity and brought that hurt. Hurt into other people's lives, hurt in the lives of our community by our own selfishness, our own sin. But to recommit ourselves as we sit here and as we come to this table to work towards that unity, to work towards that wholeness, the Lord gives us the grace to do that through the sacrament as we share this sacred meal together, the actual body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Savior. It is through the gift of this Eucharist, it is through the grace of this Eucharist that he continues to draw us together and to make us one. The Lord continues that prayer as he prayed for his apostles on the night before he died. May they be one, Father, as you and I are one. His desire and his prayer for us continues to be that today. And just like I and my brothers and sisters recommitted to ourselves many times, we need to many times return to this altar to recommit ourselves. Because we know that we won't go forward perfect, but we can always go forward better in continuing to work for that unity. We are truly brothers and sisters with one another. And we are to be united with one another, to forgive one another. My mom has always been an example to me of that kind of unity and to working for that unity. My mom is one of seven children. And they got along very well, for the most part. But there would be arguments, and there would be disagreements, and they looked at things differently in many ways. And I remember when my grandmother was ill, she had Alzheimer's, 
there was a doctor that was recommending surgery. My mom and six of, if five of them were brothers and sisters didn't want to do the surgery. One brother wanted to do the surgery. And because of that disagreement, he just decided he wasn't going to talk to anyone anymore. And my mom, I remember, went to his house, knocked on the door, he came to the door, and she said to him, we are family, and we've always fought, but we've always talked. And you can disagree, but you're not going to not talk. We are going to talk with each other. They continue to talk to this day. We need to overcome those differences. We can still look at things in different ways, things that are unessential in the long run. But we're always to have charity for one another. As we celebrate today, may we respond to the Lord's Prayer. And I'm sure the prayer of every mother in her heart and every father in his heart. May they be one, as you and I, Father, are one. I need to get skinnier hands or a wider shelf down there. What does unite us is the faith that we share. Together, let us profess that faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism forgiveness of sins, and I look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, we turn to our loving God and present our prayers and needs this day. For all Christians, that in imitation of the Father and the Son, we would be one in mind and heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nation, that the love of God would fill their hearts and govern their actions at the service of the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers and mother figures, that with Mary as a model, they would echo God's care and concern for those whom they call their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all suffering mothers, that their pain and grief would be united to Mary, mother of sorrows, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that awaiting the celebration of Pentecost, we would prepare our hearts worthily for the coming of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Robert and Francis Bukowski, for whom this Mass is being offered, we also pray for Norma Birch, mother of Lynn Capone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of petitions and for the needs we remember now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we come before you in faith. Hear these prayers, give answer according to your will, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the children, 
For the children's collection, we will sing number 953, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, verses 1 and 2, and for the offertory, verses 3 and 4.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all the disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Oh, celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Wenceslaus, and with all the saints of whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of the power and the glory of you now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under me, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The communion hymn is number 712, The King of Love, My Shepherd is. As a nation this weekend, we honor mothers. As a church, we give thanks for the vocation of motherhood. And I'd like to invite all the mothers here present to please stand for a blessing. If you're sitting near your mother or wife, I invite you to stand, extend your hands towards them, otherwise to the other women standing here in our midst. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, 
so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your vocation and witness. Let's all stand and pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a quick reminder, the Knights of Columbus have roses out there. It's a suggested donation of $5 for mothers, or if you'd like to pick one up for your mother to take with you. Now all the proceeds go to EPS. Also on behalf of the parish, I invite all the women of the parish to pick one of these up. There's a quote from Isaiah that states, You are precious in my eyes and honored. They are wild flowers. You can plant them when you get home and water them and, and have those flowers come up during the summertime. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.